So again, not going backwards and reviewing aquatic biomes. It's, Nolan, we've covered that enough. Wouldn't you agree with that? Uh, but yesterday we started terrestrial biomes, terrestrial biomes, and those are the ones that are related to land. Again, I repeat this, Veda, because I think this is really important. You're going, you're doing all these Google Docs, right? And the first one you're going to do is grasslands. And some of you with these like two and three sentence, quote unquote, paragraphs aren't cutting it. Again, a grassland is a terrestrial biome, period. Terrestrial means having to do with land, period. You've already got two sentences in the grasslands. And then I can go ahead and tell you, in a grassland, the most important plant life is grass. There's three sentences. I mean, it's not hard to do these, these Google Docs. Some people are making it way too difficult. So again, we went through grasslands yesterday. And they're called grasslands. And we kind of laughed at the, uh, the Bill Nye video when he talked about wetlands because it was wetlands that were wet. These are lands that have a lot of grass. Okay, There are some trees, but not a whole bunch. And we went through all the different things that happened inside of a grassland yesterday. And I think this is extremely important for us to understand. To live in a grassland, you have to have very special adaptations. The grass has to have a very special adaptation because of that. We went through the fact that grasslands have very specific abiotic factors yesterday. That it has two different seasons in North America and the prairie we're talking about, because we'll get to the savanna after that today. Um, it has like super cold winters where it snows a lot. That's where they get most of their precipitation and some pretty hot summers up to 100 degrees. And we said, if you're going to live in a grassland, you're probably going to be an herbivore. If there's a whole bunch of herbivores there, you know that there's going to be some carnivores that move into the area as well. And as we rolled through that, we looked at, there's obviously different grasses. You don't have to know wild oats and buffalo grass and all that. You just need to know that there's different grasses. And we saw in that video with um, the, the prairie dogs that they have a very special niche. They eat the grass down so that like, the other animals can see the predators from far away. And then there's some animals that eat the grasses that are a little bit closer to the ground and that was really important for us as well so again if you haven't watched this video i most definitely would watch it uh, we'll watch these later you need to sign into discovery if you're at home but here it is grassland anchor chart notes like if you don't have pretty much this stuff down and, and if you look at this like let's look real close at this brand and don't you think that there's enough in just these notes that you could write two good paragraphs about grasslands one could say, I've done the work for you. You just have to take the time to put it in your own words. Again, grasslands, most important plant life is grass. I'm pretty sure I have that over there. Two main seasons, summer and winter. I have that on the anchor chart from yesterday. In the summer, it's hot and dry. There can be fires from lightning strikes or gender reveal parties, depending on what you want to do. And in the winter, they can have a majority of their precipitation from snow, and it's super, super cold. The soil there. Up until now, we've always said it varies, it varies, it varies. Not anymore. Now that we're on terrestrial biomes, things get very like um, specific. The soil here is good. It's very uh, nutrient-rich and dense. How do I know that? Because there's tons of grass growing. We look in the window. We see bad soil and good soil. In the good soil, the plants is growing. In the bad soil, it grew a little bit, and now they're all dead. The baseball field just doesn't have enough nutrients in the soil for the grass and the plants to keep growing. The plants, the main plant life is grass. They have this amazing adaptation that trees don't. Grass will grow back after you mow it. Trust me, I know that. After you eat it, I don't know that. I'm not out in the yard eating grass. And even after a fire. And I've seen that up on top of Pilot Mountain, where like the place is burned down up there, the grass has already grown back. The, the trees have not. Many, many herbivores there. You have to adapt to live in a grassland because there's no trees and not a whole lot of places to hide, no cover. So you either have to be fast like a deer or live underground like a groundhog or a prairie dog, right? And even if there was a wildfire, if you can go underground, you're probably going to be okay if it's deep enough, wouldn't you? It'd be pretty, you'd be protected. So that moves us today into a new type of grassland. The one that you were probably thinking of when I first mentioned this is and that is the savanna, the savanna. Again, it's still a grassland because it's comprised mostly of grass. There are some trees. I see some trees, but I see more grass than anything else. Savannas cover half of the surface of Africa, lots of Australia, tons of South America and India, and it's a lot of Earth's surface is grasslands. 
An important factor in the savanna is the climate. The climate is usually warm all year round, between 70 and 86 degrees, pretty much all year round. Roughly six to eight months of, of, a, of a wet summer season. And then it gets dry in the quote-unquote winter when it's still 68 degrees, which would be a fantastic winter, wouldn't it? Like, not super cold, nice and... I mean, 68 degrees is kind of warm. Now, the dry part is kind of bad. If you go four to six months without a whole lot of rain, you're going to have droughts, you're going to have dry spots, and we'll get into that. The annual rainfall is 10 to 30 inches. That's not a lot, really. During the dry season, again, lightning strikes can cause grasses in the savannah to catch fire, but we already know that grass has a very special adaptation to overcome that, right? We've already talked about that. Again, mostly grasses, some shrubs like small bushes and a few trees like the acacia tree. Most of the savannah grass is coarse and grows in patches. Do you have to write all that down? No, this is just stuff for you to kind of understand. Um, again, because they don't get enough rain, they really don't have a whole lot of trees because trees are huge plants. They require lots and lots of water unless they have adapted to live in that. One tree in particular is the acacia tree. Um, it's a pretty amazing tree. Uh, it is. It has like the most massive thorns that I've ever seen in my life on it. And we'll see that in a video that we watch. It's also a favorite... Um, treat of the giraffes they love to eat the acacia tree and we'll get into some really crazy adaptations that the acacia tree has later on you're welcome to put those crazy adaptations in your notes if you want to but we'll get to that here in a little bit we'll watch this video on the giraffe and the acacia tree in just a few minutes different types of animals in the savannah we're talking elephants, zebras, lions, giraffes. If it's in a Disney movie, it's probably in the savannah, right? Think Lion King, you're thinking savannah animals, right? These animals have to adapt to the rainy season and the dry season. Meaning during the dry season, if there's no water around, you're probably going to migrate to somewhere where there is water. They will move around. You can't survive without water. It doesn't work out. Herbivores don't have much cover to hide from predators, but the predators have to overcome that as well, don't they? Because they don't have anywhere to hide and jump out and ambush things either. So camouflage is a major adaptation for the herbivores and the uh, carnivores. Look at those two. You have this gazelle and this lion. They're both pretty much the same color as that grass behind them, aren't they? Yes, I see them. But if they are laying low and not moving, I probably could walk past one of them and not see it. We'll watch these videos. We'll look at all this stuff here in just a second. And hold up, we gotta go back. So let's, uh, hold. so to just kind of wrap things up here, cause we're gonna stop today with Savannah so that you can work on your grasslands document and then we can do the review for the vocabulary quiz tomorrow. Um, when you're looking at a savanna, it's not a lot different from the grasslands, the prairies in North America. There's two seasons, basically. We have they, they have a winter and a summer, except their winter is not as cold and bitter as it is here. It stays pretty much warm there all the time because the sun is fairly intense. They don't get a lot of rain. How do we know that? Because trees can't survive there. Trees need a lot of rain and a lot of water in the ground to keep them uh, up and surviving. So we know that about a savanna or a grassland. The biotic factors are mostly grasses, although there's some trees. The acacia, uh, it has adapted to live there. Animals and plants have to adapt to the wet season and the dry season. And animals are kind of lucky. Plants are not so lucky. Animals can get up and move and go find water. The, the plants can't do that. They have to learn how to store water or get it from deeper in the ground. Again, grass has the ability to grow back after being eaten by herbivores or burned down by fires. And your, your animals that you might see, this is not an extensive list because there's way more than this, but like your lions, zebra, gazelles, warthogs, birds, giraffes, etc. those type of things that you might see in a savanna. So don't get that confused. They're not going to give you something where you'd be like really debating. I wonder if this is the right answer or not. You will know if it's a list of animals from the savanna. They will not try to trick you and be super silly about it. Everybody feel good about that? Yes? All right, I'm going to pause this.